sometimes we forget alcohol is a drug, that alcohol is dangerous and addicting, um, and it's bad for our body physically, mentally, emotionally. It can affect um, the people around us, and it's not something that, you know, it's, oh, it's just alcohol. You know, like maybe we have that mentality because it's incorporated in a lot of our everyday life. Yeah, and then just thinking back uh, when COVID started, um, I remember that there was a hike in numbers, you know, of teens as well as adults using alcohol. Um, you know, people started using a lot more alcohol because, you know, they were isolated. We were, you know, uh, something was going on and it was scaring us and we didn't know what was happening. And so people were getting depressed. They were getting anxiety. Um, you know, they were just afraid. There was a lot of trauma, and I think that that led to people using alcohol as kind of a substance to numb their bodies, you know, to what was going on. And, um, you know, like you said, it's a drug and it's very addictive. And so the spike in numbers was really high, and um, kids were left alone during COVID. Uh, parents were still going to work and some kids were staying by themselves. And so, you know, if mom, dad had alcohol in the house, well, how easy was that to experiment yeah. with it? Especially talking about the accessibility. During COVID, people were able to order alcohol, deliver straight to the door. The accessibility kind of, you know, helped it more for kids to be able to be at home. And then, you know, just the stress that was around the house. And, you know, just having that, knowing that, okay, if I'm not working, like, am I going to get unemployment? Where am I going to get money? Where are we going to get food? Because everybody's hoarding everything in their houses. So just all that stress and uncertainty definitely could lead people to, like, drinking a lot more. Thinking about, uh, you know, our parents, grandparents, I mean, alcohol has been legalized for many, many years. And so alcohol has been, like, the... Um, you know, what people go to, you know, when they're happy, they drink alcohol. When they're sad, they drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. If they're depressed, they'll drink alcohol. You know, if I'm allowing my kids to drink, I'm drinking, they're drinking, they're going to bring their friends over and they're going to say, oh, my parents are okay with, you know, with us drinking, even if it's not true. Mm -hmm. um, but it just becomes a bigger issue in the community because you have, you know, generation and generation yeah. uh, using alcohol because they think it's not a bad thing, just like you were mentioning. Um, you know, they never associate alcohol with drug use. And that's especially for parents, you know, what they say, actions speak louder than words. So if we're trying to have our kids not to drink, but we have it at home all the time without, you know, talking to them, you know, if you are having, you know, because alcohol, at least in, in my family or in our community alcohol like you said is with everything a party there's alcohol like there's always alcohol involved so mm -hmm. i think giving that example without having to explain to our kids like okay maybe we're not giving the best example by doing that and then talking to them and educating them on you know what what it is the right thing you know alcohol is a drug mm -hmm. and it can affect us and even though in our community is you know basically highly accepted they sell it at restaurants they have it in different events i mean you go to the fair and the fair sells alcohol there's mm -hmm. alcohol everywhere so it's always good i think um, as parents to be able to talk to our children about you know what is alcohol what exactly is alcohol mm -hmm. what well, the yeah. risks associated with that we have to be very careful about the messaging with our kids about you know um, it's more important for them to do as you do than do as you say, because yeah. um, we can say a lot of things, but, you know, what we do, that's really what's teaching mm -hmm. them or giving them the message. Yeah. And a lot of the times we're worried like, oh, my God, marijuana and edibles, the vaping fentanyl fake pills and maybe we're focused on that and we're like okay that our kids are not using drugs and are using drugs and we forget that a lot of the times alcohol is probably the first drug that they're going to try and you know alcohol can lead to the use of all those other drugs that we're worried about our kids using the important thing to know and to talk to our kids about is uh, the effect it has on the brain mm -hmm. because they have developing brains. Their brain is still developing. And as long as their brain is developing, 
um, if they're using any type of substance, like for example, right now alcohol, we already know it's gonna affect their judgment, it's gonna affect you know, their problem solving, goal setting. Yeah. Um, and those are things that we all need in life. You know, because we uh, we're eventually they're eventually going to grow up to be adults, and they have to know, you know, the importance about uh, setting goals and um, you know reaching them and problem solving. As a parent, I think talking to our kids about you know what is a DUI and how can you prevent something like that if you're going out having a plan how are you going to get home or who's going to take you mm -hmm. and if they do have you know a designated driver and that plan fails like what are they going to do after that what's their plan b and maybe talking to them and having that relationship where it's like well if that is to happen it's okay for you to call me so i can pick you up because mm -hmm. i rather pick you up than you be in an accident you know hurting yourself or hurting somebody else or even you know killing another person so i think that as parents we constantly have to keep reminding them you know if you do this this will happen um because they need those constant reminders because their brain is not capable of doing that until you know it's fully developed so um that's really important we need to also do role playing you know hey if you're in a situation where someone's offering you to drink or to use any substance um, you know, what, what can you answer? Um, so I think having a plan pre, you know, pre-planning or where I'm going to go to a party and okay, there's probably going to be alcohol present. Um, what are you going to do? What are you going to yeah. say? And so role playing, I think is, uh, going to be really important. It's a, uh, key, um, in giving them the skills that they need, uh, when they're put in a situation of that source. Yeah. And just I know some parents sometimes think that if we talk to them about alcohol or we've talked to them about making that plan or putting them in that situation, that fake situation is going to make them want to drink or want to use any other drugs. But in reality, that's not true. I think um, talking to them about it, um, giving them the right information will definitely help them. And as parents that we can you know, think about doing is, um, like you said, role playing and empowering our kids to have an answer to when they get asked, hey, you know, come and drink with us or why aren't you drinking um, to have what their excuse is going to be basically like, you know, anything from like, oh, well, you know, like my mom's going to be picking me up and she's always, you know, checking me in you know, smell me, or I have a soccer game tomorrow early in the morning that I have to wake up to, um, even to the point where it's like, well, I'm taking a medication and it can be mixed with alcohol. Just like having them, you know, be ready with a plan that they can ask so they're not put on the spot, reminding them of the options that they have. Yeah, and even as parents, I mean, um, we can have the application and we can pay for their uh, Uber or their ride, whatever they decide to come home in. Um, it's better to come home in an Uber than to come home in a police car. Yeah. Or, um, you know, I would tell my kids, um, whenever you're out, you know, and if it's three in the morning and you can't drive, I'd rather you call me at three in the morning than to get a knock on the door from a police officer, you know, telling me that something happened. So there's uh, many things that we can, you know, we can do and we can talk to our kids about, but the importance here is having that communication with our kids mm -hmm. and telling them, because if you don't tell them, it's not like it's gonna magically appear in their thoughts or their brain, oh, I should call my mom. Yeah. You know, so it's important. Um, one thing that we do, um, in the county is we check a uh, place of last drink when somebody gets a DUI. So um, when people are getting DUIs, if the last place where they drank was at a house party, they're gonna go back to that, you know, that residence. Um, if they're minors, you need to remember that uh, minors are not supposed to have any, any alcohol in their system. Um, so, um, if they're going to a restaurant, a bar, or things like that, um, they're gonna go back to that bar and that bar is gonna get in trouble for allowing a person to leave uh, while they're drunk. So I think that uh, one of the solutions could be that the staff learn when it's you know time to stop serving somebody yeah. alcohol. If they see that someone is had enough, 
then I think it's time to stop. Better off calling someone a taxi than to be responsible. And that goes for both for um, a restaurant and a home. Yeah. Like if someone comes to my house and they're drinking, I'm going to take away their keys. Um, or I may, me myself, call an Uber or a Lyft for them, you know, and it's cheaper than, you know, to get a big citation for yeah. or being in trouble for allowing someone to leave your house when they're mm -hmm. super drunk yeah. and driving. Being, you know, on the lookout, if you get a drink and it's opened, don't take it. If you didn't see the bartender make your drink, then I wouldn't take it either because you don't know what things can be on your drinks or leaving mm -hmm. your drink unattended to go to the bathroom or to go dance or something and then coming back to it. We don't know if there was something put in your drink or not.